the white man had concluded that the only way to save the Indians was to destroy them, that the last great Indian war should be waged against children. They were coming for the children. David Adams This is the St. Ignatius Mission Schools in Montana. This is the hellscape that Native American children were forced to live in from the late 1880s up until the 1970s. Untold amounts of children were forced from their families and put into this school, or perhaps prison is a better term. The children here were horrifically physically and sexually abused by nuns, lay people, and priests. In 2011, a lawsuit was filed against the Catholic Church and the nuns responsible. Eventually, more than 300 people had joined suit. It is astonishing to think that these white people thought that they were somehow better than the children they were housing when they were clearly a hotbed of sex offenders. Hey everybody and welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. This is Katie Weaver and I'm here with my co-anchor, sister and partner in crime, Christy Brower. Hello. Hey everybody. Nice to be here. I hope you're all doing well. Yeah, it is our Wednesday case already it this is. week. I know that's this week is flying by, man. For sure. Yeah. Well, and last night we had Spirit School and we have a new Patreon case out as well. Yeah. We are we're rolling. We are. We are trucking along. We are. Now, tonight, of course, is uh, live case updates. So join us at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, mm -hmm. uh, either on really Facebook. Exciting announcement coming tonight. Yes. Yep. Something new we're going to share with you. Yeah. Cool stuff happening. Yeah. So join us tonight at 7 for the live stream on YouTube or on Facebook. And then, of course, tomorrow night, uh, Thursday night, is the Psychic Hour. So lots of good stuff still to come with us. For sure. So this case is, uh, I've been thinking a lot about the residential schools in the U.S. Since Canada is very actively this year uh, using sonar uh, technology to search the grounds of all of the residential schools there, to find all of the graves of all of the First Nations children and identify them and do them justice. And that hasn't happened yet here in the US. We've been watching and waiting and we've been anxious to see that start happening. So I've been keeping a close eye on some of the residential uh, schools around us and just kind of wondering and waiting. Now, something did happen uh, you know, with Deb Haland being Holland or Haland, tell me. Haland, I believe. Haland, uh, of course, being the, uh, you know, in the uh, Department of the Interior now, we have mm -hmm. something amazing happening because she is working on, you know, she's the new Secretary of the Interior. She's working on uh, doing the same thing. So on June 22nd, she introduce the Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative, which will uncover the truth about the loss of human life and the lasting consequences of government policies, mm. including hunting down the graves of all of these children. Wow. So the project is supposed to include the gathering of historical records, if there are any, to mm -hmm. identify past boarding school locations. There is approximately 300 and 350 uh, Indian boarding schools here in the United States. Oh, God. So they want to find the locate the known and possible burial sites and uncover the names and tribal affiliations of the student victims. So that's happening. So we're glad to know that and we'll mm -hmm. keep watching that and keeping an eye on that. But in the meantime, as I was doing a little research on that, I found another a case that I felt like was very much worth our time to, uh, you know, to, to share and to talk about because I knew some of these things. Uh, I 
but I'm amazed how often I talk to people who did not know very much about the abuse that's happened at these schools and we're pretty shocked to hear it. And so I think that's really important conversations to have. Yeah. Talking today, of course, about the St. Ignatius School in Montana. So, and Christy, I just wanted to ask you, do you recognize this place? Yeah, I do. We've been here. We have. This St. Ignatius is a tiny little community outside of Missoula. It is very near the Garden of a Thousand Buddhas. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Uh, towards Flathead Lake. This is uh, yeah. the Flathead Indian Reservation. And this school, the history of it is pretty, uh, is very old. Uh, the, the mission was established in 1854. Mm. And then a little later, they formed two different schools. There was the Ursuline Academy, which was for the girls, and St. Ignatius Mission School was for the boys. And then at some point, they actually, in the 40s, they joined the two schools together. At one point, the boys' school was actually burned to the ground by one of the boys who had had enough Smart of this kid. shit. Yeah. Smart kid. You know, one thing that the Catholic Church will say over and over again is that this was a choice. It was a choice to bring your children here. It was not a choice. Yeah, Native families, uh, you know, across the, the land will say it was not a choice. We were threatened. We were sometimes imprisoned. We were, you know, in all ways, we were not given a choice. They were taking our children. They were forcing them into these facilities. Right. Now, supposedly they were taking them into these uh, schools, at least in this area, by about the age of five. However, uh, records do show that sometimes they were taken there much, much sooner than oh that. Oh, God. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. And so, but this school, of course, uh, you know, it, this is one of the really early ones here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And the Midwest? yeah, so mm. in the time that this school was in, uh, you know, in operation, it was finally, I think that this, this school itself was finally closed sometime in the late 70s, early 80s. But during that time, there was, that school particularly had a really, really terrible history of sexually abusing the students. And, you know, we hear a lot about priests sexually abusing and children, we don't hear nearly as much about nuns sexually abusing children. No, except that it's quite common. It's very common. And in this school, the nuns were very well-known offenders, uh, sexually assaulting. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't seem to matter. It, they, The boys, the girls, about 50% of those that were sexually abused in this school were girls and about 50% were boys. It, there was no, you know, it was about straight across the board. Mm. Uh, it's obvious that they knew that there was a big uptick in the sexual abuse from 1940 to 1970. And that is when the mother superior was a person named Mother uh, Loyola. Mm. And she has been named many, many times as being a sex offender uh, mm. with bringing boys back to her room and making them perform sex acts. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, and then of course, uh, some of the men, and I'll tell you a little bit more about them as well. But uh, one of the pictures that came up for me was this one. That's a mm -hmm. cemetery. Yeah, it surely is. Look at and, those little fences. Mm -hmm. I'm Seen very, very curious to see when they finally do these grounds. The school is gone. The mission is still there. But when they search these grounds, just how many children have been laid to rest there? Because I'm guessing it's a huge amount. Oh, this yeah. was an operation for over 100 years. Oh, my God. So in 2011, 
45 men and women that had been students at the Ursuline Academy and St. Ignatius Mission School got together and they sued the school for suffering, physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. There were 16 John Doe's and 29 Jane Doe's. Now, wow. because this abuse happened when they were minors, they remain Jane and John Doe's. As they should. So essentially, they were suing the Roman Catholic Diocese of Helena, because that was their main headquarters, mm -hmm. uh, St. Ignatius Parish, and the St. Xavier Mission, as well as the nuns from the Ursuline uh, Academy, because there's still an Ursuline Academy in Helena. Oh my God, there is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Ursuline nuns are their own, you know. Like an order? Order, yeah. 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 So is it a, it's not a a native school though? No, uh-uh, no. It's just like, it's a private Catholic school? It's a private Catholic school, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Listen, friends in Helena, if your kids are in that school, I would pull them. Yeah. So from that original 45, that suit started to, uh, pick up speed. And by the time they were done from not all from this same school, but from various schools around Montana, there were more than 350 people involved in this case. Oh my gosh. And some of them are people who did, who are still living, you know, who mm -hmm. lived there and suffered this abuse. And some of them are people who are not still living and their relatives joined the suit mm -hmm. because, um, Everybody wants their pound of flesh, and by God, they deserve it. Right. Well, and and that kind of abuse, I mean, that echoes down many generations mm -hmm. in a family. It is not as yeah. though just because the person who experienced that has passed that it didn't affect the rest of you know their future generations because it did. Yeah. Most yeah. definitely, it did. Without a doubt. Yeah. So a few of the. The, the, the initial brief is 33 pages, and I'll include it in this uh, uh, the case description, but uh, you can read through them if you want to. Trigger warning, of course, that this is a lot of really hard things to hear, mm -hmm. but some of them are just so sad. Uh, this one, Plaintiff Jane Doe 16 was a female boarding student at the Ursuline Academy from 1958 to 1960, when she was between the ages of seven and eight. Mm. Brother Charlie sexually abused her in the bell tower of the St. Ignatius Church. He asked Jane Doe if she wanted to ring the church bell. She was seven years old and that sounded exciting. And it was an honor to be the one chosen to ring the church bell. So they went up to the belfry where he raped her. Uh, he was in charge of a lot of the maintenance around the property. And whenever girls particularly would be chosen and sent to go help him with something or go clean something, you know, because use school very loosely, right? Because mostly yeah. these kids were just being used for labor. They were right. slaves in a sense. And he was raping these kids right and left. Mm. Now, some of the complainants say that their parents, when they discovered this was going on, confronted Mother Loyola. It's not like they didn't know. Everybody knew. You right, know. of course. But some of the things that they did to keep kids quiet, I, one of them was that the father that was involved here, Father Freddy, would recognize the girls who were from really poverty-stricken families, which most of them were. And he would call them into his office and show them big food boxes and say, you're going to help me out. And then I'm going to let you go visit your family and take them this big box of food. Oh, my God. So he would rape them in exchange for feeding their families. And these little girls... What were they supposed to do? Right. They would occasionally pay them cash money 
if they threatened to tell or if they got too rowdy. Of course, they would beat the crap out of them anytime anybody got too uh, oh, bodacious. At one point, uh, they had a truancy officer whose job was to go catch the runaways and drag them back. And they were kids that were trying to get away from sexual abuse. God. Uh, many of the plaintiffs uh, claim that their uh, families were threatened, that they were told, if you tell anybody or if you try to leave, we know where your families live, we'll burn down their house, we'll hurt them, things like that. Mm -hmm. They ruled them with a lot of different kinds of fear tactics, and they worked because these these kids were, you know, the Indians at that Innocent point. Children. Raised them. Yeah, the Native American kids, the amount of racism they faced, they had no power and their families had no power. No. And so these monsters... When any little kid is going to comply yeah. if you say, I'm going to hurt your family, you know? Yes. Any little kid is going to be like, fine, well, I'll do whatever, you know? Yes. One of the things that came up over and over again from the plaintiffs is that uh, priests who were putting their fingers or other objects inside little girls were telling them that they were praying inside of them. Oh my God. Yeah. Trying to make this into some kind of a church ritual, praying inside of them. Yeah. So the suit started obviously. And the people who were actually responsible for these things are long gone. Right. But, uh, and, you know, I was thinking about, we did a case a while back about a, a preacher that went missing right in the same area, right? He was a right. Catholic priest that went yes. missing. And he was one of the ones that had to go to that sex offender place in New Mexico. Yes. And I was thinking about all of these guys and that they probably all did stints there too. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe nobody... Maybe, um, you know, the church didn't care enough about Maybe. what was happening in this school. Yeah. Maybe. It just almost seems like they put them all there on purpose. Like, how likely is it that this many nuns and this many priests were pedophiles? Right. Right. Like, or was so, this just about control? Were they not really pedophiles, but they, I mean, they were, but yeah. was it really just about racism and control? Yeah. God. I'm not sure. So there was Father Dimmick. There was Father Freddy. There was Brother Charlie. And then of the nuns, there, of course, was Mother Loyola. And there was Sister Cecilia. They are all ones that were named. However, uh, some of the plaintiffs said that there were others that were also sexually, sexually assaulting children whose names they couldn't remember. Mm -hmm. But those seem to have been the main players. Wow. Uh, yeah. So we have this initial group that file suit and they start talking about it, mm -hmm. right? This was 45. And then the suit starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. And pretty soon, the Helena Diocese is filing for bankruptcy because they can't afford all of these cases. And they actually had to sell some of their property. They should have and, just burned that damn mission to the ground. Right. That's what I thought. When this case finally settled, it started in 20. 11, when it finally settled in 2015, there were 356 people that had joined the suit. And they settled for, I believe, $14.5 million. Mm -hmm. That was split. It looked like each claimant was going to get around $2,500. It depended on the severity of the abuse and whether this was a uh, you know, the, the person that was abused or if it was their family that was making the claim. And, you know, they had all of these, uh, the court had put some things in place to help decide who gets what. Right. They did offer multiple apologies for what it was worth, not much. Uh, and they did, of course, uh, you know, have to pay out the nose for what they had done. 
So did they settle or were they, or was the, I mean, did the judge rule or did they, they settled? Settle? No, they settled. Yeah. Apologies yeah. mean nothing when they knew the whole time. Mm -hmm. This wasn't an unknown thing. This was a known no. thing. Yep. Oh. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. It was a known thing and it was something that they could have stopped a long time ago. And unfortunately, you know, the Catholic Church just cannot seem to get away from all of their crimes because they just keep popping up. But this one I just thought was especially egregious because it was such a powerless situation. The way they were exploiting the poverty of these children and their families to be able to continue to sexually abuse them. Just all of it. But I have questions. One of them, of course, is how many of those kids are buried on that land yeah. because I just will know, mm -hmm. will know one of these days that will be one of the lands that is surveyed and will know. Good. I, uh, my other question is where'd all the babies go? Yeah. That was my question is what were they doing about pregnancies? Cause you know, you know, those girls were getting pregnant. Where'd all the babies go? You know, we know that in Canada, they were incinerating them or burying them or just whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But in this case, where did all the babies go? Because you know that lots of babies were made. Yeah. It's so Maybe. disgusting, you know. And we know mm -hmm. also that if 350 people came forth and they weren't all from the St. Ignatius School, some of them were from other schools in Montana, mm -hmm. but the bulk of them were. Mm -hmm. If they came forward, how many kids were actually abused? Right. Thousands. Thousands. Thousands, thousands and thousands. Thousands. That, that utter disrespect for just human life from supposedly men and women of God. Mm -hmm. Which, believe me, I'm saying that with big air quotes because... Yeah clearly not the case but no it's it's just horrifying yeah to me that this was allowed to go on yeah that these schools existed in the first place mm -hmm. but, but then they ever children existed. experienced this kind of abuse it's just yeah it's a miracle that anybody made it out alive mm -hmm. from a place like that absolutely absolutely Oh, it's just it's probably the kids that learned to comply. Yeah. Anybody that put up a fuss probably disappeared. Well, and it makes me sick that kids were running away and being Trying hunted down them. and drugged back. Yeah. yeah. And that yeah. those were adult human beings that thought that what they were doing was okay. Yeah. At first whatever reason in their mind what they were doing was okay mm -hmm. that they somehow thought that they were better right that, that they, they were, were better better my god yeah the conversation about all of this will never cease to infuriate me and no. astonish me and you know but we, we're not going to stop talking about it. No. And I know this is one of those episodes that will make people very uncomfortable. Well, and honestly, this is probably one of those episodes that will get a lower, uh, we'll get lower numbers of watchers. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Honestly, our whole week has been like that. We've done three uncomfortable cases in a row. Mm -hmm. It's just we have. the energy right now, I guess. I guess. Well, actually, four if you are a patron and listen to the mm -hmm. patron episode that we did. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It must be a little part of the energy of this week. We are confronting some hard stuff, yeah. but we're not going to shut up about this. We sure are. And honestly, when they survey that land and they actually know how many children are buried there, we'll probably go visit. Yeah. We'll probably go attend a vigil. We'll probably go be a part of that because this is close to us. Yeah, well, close-ish to us. But... Uh, we're not going to stop watching this stuff and, and no one should. No. And we all need to continue to be a voice here and recognize 
what wounds our First Nations people are carrying, what generational wounds and ancestral wounds they're carrying, and how deeply they've been opened as of late and be extremely respectful of that. Yeah. Yeah. We are here only to report Mm -hmm. and we stand behind those First Nations people who want to do whatever they need to do. Do for whatever they need here. to do. Do whatever yeah. you need to do with this situation. We're here to mm-hmm. report on it. We are here as to show support. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that that is our role at this it point. We're, we are here as witnesses. We're here as support. And we'll just keep on finding these cases and reporting because that's what we can do. Yeah, we have so, to tell these stories. We cannot not, you know, the, the fact that this stuff went on at that school and was well known to be going on and was yeah. still okay because nobody spoke up. And yeah. I'll tell you what, our mother raised us <laughs> to speak up. Yeah. She did. Yep. Without a doubt. Yeah. That was something that we watched her do her entire life and I'll never not speak up when I yeah. see something wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. We all have to. Yeah. We have got to. And in cases like this, we have to be willing to talk about them. We have to be willing to shine light on them, no matter how uncomfortable it is, no matter how much of a trigger it is, no matter how much you wish that these things had never happened. They did. They did. And we have to acknowledge it because we can't heal. No. The people that have been harmed cannot heal unless we acknowledge it and we stand as witness and we support. Yep, for sure. All righty. Well, there you have it. So I will put some links in the case description so that you guys can uh, chase this case down a little bit further if you want to. Uh, if you want to read through the brief um, of those original 45 uh, complainants, you're, you're, it'll, I don't know if you want to or not. Honestly, it's hard to read, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but, but I will provide it if you choose to. And we'll just keep an eye on this one. So that's it. Well, mm-hmm. thanks you guys so much for being here. Come back tonight at 7 p.m. for case updates and for a really fun announcement that we've got. Uh, yes. Good stuff rolling around. So, Christy, thank you. And, of course, uh, we'll see you later. Mm-hmm. So this has been yet another production of True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. Bye, guys.